howdy, 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 and more howdy to you. Welcome to the Lady Walker Show. I am Lady Walker, and my beloved peeps, I have another Jim Dandy of a show in store for you. Yes, an interesting show. And what makes it so interesting? I have a young, beautiful lady. She is here and she is going to tell us about the book, the book that she has written entitled, Little Girl Blues, Existence of an Image. So put your hands together <laughs> and welcome J.N. McGee. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> Howdy, J.N. Howdy, Miss Walker. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? All is well and working out for my greatest good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, you're looking fabulous. Thank you. I love that black. I love that silver like kind of hair. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The life of an artist. <laughs> oh, exactly. The life of an artist. Yes, All right. Now, tell us about the life. Now, first, tell us about JN. Who is JN? McGee. We know she's an artist. We know she has written. Well, that's your first book? Yes, ma'am. A book entitled, once again, Little Girl Blue Existence of an Image. Yes, okay. ma'am. Now, tell us before you got to that point, how did it all come about? Well, um, I've been writing poetry for 20 years now. And that's a long time. Yes. <laughs> 20 years. It's, it's been a very long time and um, I've never just had the urge to publish. I just used it as a way of a therapeutic release. Oh, okay. Because I had uh, trouble really expressing myself. So I just grabbed pen and paper and just started writing. So it wasn't until probably my senior year in high school, we was working on a project and my teacher figured out what it was. She's like, oh, you like to write poetry. I was like, I didn't know what I was writing. I was just just writing, you know, to get everything that I was feeling out because, you know, nobody had time to listen. Oh, or really? Nobody cared. Well, that is a therapeutic way mm -hmm. of releasing what needs to be released in a good way. Yes, thank God it came out that way. <laughs> I really would hate the alternative, but that's, that's what put me on the path of, you know, writing and learning how to express myself at least from a, you know, written stage in my life. So your teacher was the one who recognized. She did. She did. Um, her name was uh, Miss Gigi Barron. I haven't seen her in a very long time, but um, she was the one. Are you originally from? Are you in uh, from Jack? Are you at Jacksonian, or? I'm from Simpson County, Minnehaha, oh, Mississippi. Okay, that's, okay. that's my hometown. I'm originally from McGee. Yeah, oh, okay. I've been here for many moons. <laughs> Many moons. <laughs> yes, okay. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Minden Hall. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's right next door to me. Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Right on the borderline. <laughs> yes, it is. So you started writing, you know, at a young age, mm -hmm. you know, and your teacher figure out what it was. Yes, ma'am. And they said, okay, so that's what it is. Yes, ma'am. And ma then where did it go from there? Well, I started um, entering portrait contests. Um, I don't know if it's still around now. It was portrait.com at first, and I was just entering, and then it, they had a, a category where you can you know, do your own thing, and it was copywritten. So one day I got something in the mail and that was inviting me to come to a portrait convention in Orlando, Florida. Oh, okay. That was 2003, I believe, and my mom was like, do you wanna go? And I was like, mm, I mean, we don't have the money to go, but she was like, that's not what I asked, do you wanna go? And I'm like, yeah, I'll go. So, you know, back then we got out there on the four-way stop and, you know, we raised the money to get out there and we didn't exactly stay in Orlando, but we stayed in the town next over, which was Kissimmee or Kissimmee, yes, Florida. Kissimmee, uh -huh. Yes, and um, I got there and I just felt, I don't know, like the whole world just opened up to me. I had never seen so many poets in my life. So I was talking to them and you know, one day we're up there, you know, reading our stuff, and then the next day we'll actually be com com competing. So I looked at my mom, I was like, I'm oh, glad we came. Oh, it was a came. competition on who, okay. Yes, ma'am. So, you know, I looked at my mom and said, well, thank you for, you know, giving me the opportunity to come, because, you know, 
I won't lie, in my hometown, you, portrait really is not taken seriously. It's just, I know, which is a sad thing because it can really touch a person who reads it in a positive way. Yes, and you know, it can, it can be uplifting. It can be. It can get you. It can get you to thinking. Uh, yes, I love <laughs> thought-provoking poetry. I love it, but you know, it, it wasn't really take it seriously and even with my mom you know she was telling me it was just a hobby and I would get mad like it's not a hobby you know it's I'm like I don't understand what I'm feeling at the time I said but I know it's it's passionate it's it's the core of me so it's not a hobby so you know I got up there and I read a poem far from me so they gave me my uh, medallion and they gave me a trophy saying outstanding achievement in portrait and that was one of the proudest moments of my oh, life. Oh, great. Yay. I am pretty sure it was. So your first book of poetry that you published, how did that, I mean the title itself, oh, The how? Girl Blues, <laughs> existence <sighs> of, an, of an image. Well, when I was younger, I was going through, when I say that, Lord, I was going through a lot of stuff it felt like everything I'm going through now as an adult, I experienced it earlier as a child. You know, I was, you know, questioning my, you know, existence, like my identity, what was I here for? And then it got to the point where I stopped questioning stuff and just, you know, did it. So it kind of caused me to be blue, you know? It did, it did cause me to well, be blue. Well, hold on for a moment and we'll pick back up mm -hmm. with that after we come from break. Gotcha. Okay, <laughs> be right back. Welcome back, my beloved peeps. I am with the Miss Jasma J.N. <laughs> McGee. J.N. is your pseudo name, huh? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, J.N. McGee. Yes, ma'am. And the author of Little Girl Blues, is Existence of an image. image. Okay, now you were talking about the blues as yes, a child. The blues. Yeah, as a grown up, <laughs> you start experiencing. Uh, well, it, it got a little more, a little more even now. But you know, as a child coming into an adolescent, it was, it was. Whew, there are no words for that. Really? I was, like I said, I was going through a, a lot of stuff. You know, it kind of. As a youngster, you were going through a whole lot. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Cause um, my dad, he's a diabetic type one. And he stayed in the hospital a lot and, you know, it forced my mom to work a lot of jobs and, you know, at night she was trying to go to school. So, you know, it left me the oldest, you know, to take care of the house, look after my father and, you know, look after my younger siblings. So, you know, at first it just, if she say something, it just, it was automatic. I didn't question it. She said, do it. I did it. Which, you know. Oh, well, that's interesting because nowadays you tell a child to do something <laughs> or a teen, you almost got the look. Yes, ma'am. So, you, you know, I did, I did what I was told, but, you know, as I was saying, as I began to become an adolescent, I never thought about me. I never considered me. You know, my mom told me to do what I did it, so. Oh, that's interesting. I never considered me. That's one of your poems. Yes! <laughs> I never considered me, okay? Yes, I, I never did. It's just, it, I just one of those things I just didn't think about. You know, my family was first. That's how I felt. My, my family was my core. It was my duty, and I felt obligated to do so. But when I came into an adolescent, I started questioning that because I'm like, I'm always giving. I'm always doing stuff, but I really wasn't thinking why. Like, why am I programmed like this? Like, like a dog, you train, if you train a dog to do something, right. they do it. So they don't question it, they're obedient, they're doing what the master say. So I, that's how I felt between a robot and a and an animal. Come like I'm doing this stuff automatically and I don't see nothing wrong with it, but other people began to see something wrong with it. So. Really? And when they, and when they began to see what was going on, then how did that affect you? It really made me like really start questioning a lot of you know societal. Well, did they come to you, or they went to your mother and said something they, about it? They would come to me and like you know normally p kids back then you know they were going staying out late. Oh, I, okay. You were able to do that. Okay. Uh, uh, I was at home, you know, cooking, cleaning, you know, substitute mom, substitute housewife. So <laughs> they was like, you don't see anything wrong with that. I'm like, no. It's like so you stay at home all day. 
doing the same thing every day that does not bother you. And I thought like- They couldn't compute that, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> Teens. <laughs> they was like, well, they, you know, I, I guess that's okay, but when will you start living your life? And I thought like, I kind of thought I was, but I, I wasn't. And these were your peers? Peers, teachers. Oh, okay. You know, because okay. they would say, you know, like, you know, Jasmine, she's she's smart. She's great in English. She's able to, you know, interpret and translate. Like, how did you get her to be like that? Because she's not like any other student. And, you know, my mom would just, she really didn't know how to answer that question. But the question kind of inflected to me, like, why do I do that? Why am I like this? Why I'm not like everybody else? So that's when. I started beating myself up on the inside, like, why am I so different? Why can't I be like so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so? Why can't I just do like everybody else? But, you know, I didn't want to disappoint my parents, so I just, I took that role on. I didn't question. I didn't complain. So... Wow, that is so interesting. Nowadays, you don't find a lot of adolescent I, teens, you know, thinking that way. I know, and, you know, those are, like, secret thoughts. I didn't, I wasn't really talking to people, I didn't have a lot of friends, so it was just me, my paper and pen, and sometimes when I'm talking to God, I'm just like, well, Lord, why am I so different? What, what is it about me? I can't do certain things. Like, if I lie, it makes me feel wrong. <laughs> wow, how about that? Yeah, so, you know, even if I tell a little white lie, that's fine, but as far as, you know, if I went somewhere, my mom would ask me why I went. But were your siblings that way? Or it was just you? They had more They had more freedom than I did. You know, my brother, you know how men are. He was in the, the whirlwind, wherever it took him, he was there. And then my sister, she was super smart. And she was in band, then it just left me. You know, they doted on those two. And I'm looking at them like, well, hey, you know, I, I write poetry. That's, that's nice, honey. You know, that's, that's oh, good. Oh, they didn't see the good and all of that on where it could take you in the long run. Yes, so you know, in my family on both sides, it's either music or athletics. Oh, You really? may have music in between, because on my dad's side, you know, my grandmother, she had a group called the Everettes. It was her. Yeah, I have heard of that group. Yes, my grandmother, you know, they had that group, and I don't know if they still sing now, but it passed from her to her children. So, you know, she, she's pretty. Famous, my grandmother. Oh, she's pretty famous, Leola McGee. I love my grandmother, but um, it's always either or. Music is, you know, automatic, but it's either that or sports. But you know, even with poetry, it can you can add you can add music behind exactly. it. Exactly, but yeah, that's not to my my people. You know, I had maybe a couple of aunts and uncles that you know engage with me about it, but as far as like really encouraging me, yeah. They didn't encourage, cause they didn't see how this was going to kind of put you financially wise oh, in yes. the long run. Yes, I need to find a real job. <laughs> but that is a real job, depending on how, it's up to you on how you, you know, carve it, it out to be a real job. Exactly, but you know. You need a real job. Yeah, that, that's, uh, uh, I Do you that. know how many people have been told that about you know, what they have a passion to do. Mm -hmm. And just in the eyes of some people, it didn't look like a, or it wasn't a real job, so to speak. It's not a real, real job. job. But then the very thing they said, it wasn't a real job, mm -hmm. ended up being, you know, uh, a financial stable career for somebody. Exactly. And, you know, that's why I said it took me probably up to how old I am now, 30 to learn that you know come like i you know i've been doing all this stuff for so long it made me get little girl blues and it also questioned you know the existence because i wasn't living i was existing just you know putting on different masks you yes. know if i got in trouble i don't get in trouble you're not supposed to do that and then you know you went from that mask to <laughs> when I went to college, that was the wide awakening for me because people already knew when they looked at me, I was sheltered. Really? I didn't have to say anything. They looked at me and just, they knew. And I'm like, how could they tell that? They said, because you stay in your room, you study, 
You don't come out. Unless... Well, in a way, it was a good thing. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, I... in a way, not all the way, but just a bit, you know. Yeah, yeah, it was a good college, thing. College, you know, you have freedom. <laughs> you do all kinds of stuff, okay? Yeah. You don't have your parents looking over your shoulders. Yeah, yes, ma'am. So. But, um, yeah, you know, in, in a good sense, it did keep me sheltered. But, again, you know, it. I was just existing. And, like I said, for a long time, I really didn't see anything wrong with it. So, people are looking at me like, you know, okay, you're not at home anymore. I'm like, okay. They said, when are you going to start living life, like, doing something for Jasmine? I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. And they said, that would scare me. Why you don't know? I never just took the time to find out. I never had time, you know, between taking care of my father and looking after my siblings, oh. you know, going to school. And that's a lot with being a young one. That's a mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. It was. But that was bestowed upon you. Yes. That's well, I tell you what, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about some other things yes. that you are doing and you are heading out to Boston. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we're going to come back and talk about some of the old things. All right, Ms. Walker. All righty. We'll be right back. Welcome back, my peeps. My guest is J.N. McGee. <laughs> All right, Miss Arthur. Now, finish telling us about, oh, 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 you're getting ready to fly away to Boston. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, and that is in when? Uh, August, what? September? Yeah, next month. Probably the last of next month. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so what is the nature of this Boston trip? Well, I, I promise you, it was very spontaneous. I decided at the last minute that I want to um, go back to school. The school I originally wanted to go to was in Alabama. I think it's University of Alabama. And they had a one-year program for copy editing, which is the profession that I really want to be in. But they kept giving the runaround. They wouldn't return my phone calls or anything to the last week where they were trying to really pressure me to doing the GRE and everything. And I told them, well, I don't have time for that now, hence why I was calling. Right. So I got real discouraged. I was crying, and one of my cousins, she contacted me on Facebook and said, uh, I need to call and talk to you. And I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> so she called me. We talked. And I said, I want to go to that school. And I've been trying to get in that school for two years. Could not get into that school. So she said, okay, so what? Find another school. So this particular school focused only on the copying and editing part? Yes, ma'am, because I didn't know, you know, I've been researching, kind of doing freelance work, but, you know, a lot of people kept saying you need professional training. I laughed. I said, okay, you know, you're right. I do need to know what I'm doing and have more confidence in what I'm doing. So she told me to look up some more schools and... Emerson caught my attention because it's hands-on. I need to be guided. I need a mentor. You know, that, that's what I was looking for. Of course, at the time, I wasn't thinking I had to go to Boston. I was like, okay, well, do they have this online? Do they have this in Los Angeles? And I called the grad of admin, administration. They was like, no, it's here. You have to come here. I was like, well. <laughs> So, you know, Boston, I, okay. Yes. And I said, well, Lord, this, this might be what I need to get back into my, my artistry. So. Really? How got, long is the program? I think it's two years, but I'm gunning for a year because I'm hungry. You know, when I say I'm, I'm hungry, like, I feel like I'm, I'm playing catch up because I spent all those years not really taking the time to figure out what I want to do for myself. It was always family. It was nothing else and then it became yeah. family to whatever I could be for friends and significant others like I really just lost myself isn't that something and I think that happens to many of people mm -hmm. they lose themselves doing everything for everybody else mm -hmm. not you know really figuring out what it is that they want what their purpose may be yes and that's that's the scariest thing to me you know most folks was telling me don't you ever get lonely I'm like no do you I mean don't you want to go out and live your life? I'm like, yes, sir, but that's not my fear. My fear is being trapped, being stuck, and not getting to the next stage in my life. I'm 30 now. I said, I can't wait another 30 years to <laughs> try know, to right? figure it out. So That's interesting. <laughs> you felt trapped. I did. That's why I was like, 
I guess, you know, because I was younger, it didn't really bother me until, you know, I started becoming a teen and, you know, everybody else was doing everything else. And I'm looking like, well, I got to go home and I got to, you know, wash dishes and clean the tub and do clothes. And they're looking at me like, <laughs> you like to do chores? I'm like, yes, I love to do chores. Oh, really? I did. You grew to love it? I did. Okay. And then, you know, everybody was away from home. I found my peace like that, like oh, singing. Okay. Yes. Like Cinderella, you know, I was singing and doing chores. <laughs> So. Well, that's so interesting because I'm not a big fan of the washing dishes. Ooh, I am not. But whenever I do now, I try to look at it in, in a positive way because I can listen to various motivational mm -hmm. messages and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I have it my my iPad or either my phone that would be there, mm -hmm. mainly the iPad on the Wi-Fi in the house, and I'm, and it's bigger. And I'm listening to you know various motivational messages. Mm -hmm. uh, Les Brown. Oh, he's oh I love Les Brown. I have got to look this man Zig up. Zig Ziglar. Tony Robbins, there's so many, so really? many people that I listen to. And uh, then I go, it goes all the way back to Earl Nightingale, Napoleon Hill. You know, just so many. Wow. I mean, that I listen to, and, and it's very inspiring. It is. And, and when I'm washing dishes, you know, I look at it like, okay, uh, I can listen at these messages. So that way, I won't be dreading to do the dishes. Yes, ma'am, because that's, that's another reason. Well, I, I'm not like that now, now. I don't like chores now, but <laughs> basically, when I was doing dishes and stuff, it caused my mind to be at a state of rest. I'm not overthinking, everything's not, you know, hitting each other. It just allowed me to, you know, just calm down and settle, because I don't have to use my brain to wash dishes. I know, right? <laughs> It's just a rope kind of thing. You just know they do it. Yes, it, it, yeah. it just came, it became routine. So when I went to Delta State, I began to change. I started, that's when I started dressing different, like different hairstyles, uh, mixing stuff together. So I remember one time I came home, we was on break, and my dad turned around and looked at me and said, there's something wrong with you. Oh my goodness, really? He did, and you know, he, my dad, I mean, not to speak ill of him or anything, he was just that type of person. He didn't give any po positive compliments or anything. He just say whatever was on his mind. So <laughs> I heard what he said, but I wasn't listening because I, I kind of liked that about myself. Like I became a rebel. It's like <laughs> you was listening to gospel music, you was doing this, and now you coming home, different color clothes, different color hair, listening to different types of music other than gospel. I said, Daddy, I like music, period. The only reason why I couldn't listen to it because y'all didn't like it. <laughs> so that that actually kind of actually just made me think like, wow, I'm just dressing different. Why in the world is it a problem now? Exactly. So so they like you being the way you were before you went the robot. Oh, exactly. Yes. They like that. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, I tell you what, Jazz. J N the gay, <laughs> jazz, jazz, but J N the gay. We are going to take our final break, and then we are going to come back and let you give out any contact information that uh, you want to give out, just in case somebody may be um, ready to purchase one of the books. Awesome. Or one of you, um, the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. We'll be right back. All right. <laughs> Welcome back, love. I am with J.N. McGee. Okay, now this lovely book that you have out there, a book of poetry, um, just in case anyone is interested in purchasing that book, okay. just give out any contact information that uh, you want to give out. Okay, so uh, Little Girl Blues, The Distance of an Image is on Amazon, Smashwords, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Hmm, physical locations, uh, let me see, Highway 51, the book, the bookshelf, then you have Lemuria Bookstore, which is also in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, another location is Keepsakes and Collectibles, LLC, which is also in Jackson, Mississippi, and I think I'm missing one. Oh, yeah.
Yeah, downtown marketplace in Yazoo City. I mean, Yazoo City, Mississippi. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. Now we got one more minute. Now you do uh, video blogging. Is this what you call video blogging? Uh, Out yes. there on Facebook? Oh, yes, my Because I have looked at a couple of, maybe a few. You're very good going live. That's a good thing. I, I commend people who can go live, okay? <laughs> yeah, go live and you get it right then and there. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm trying to get more engaging with my audience. Um, I didn't like it at first. And I did have somebody at the time that felt I was trying to copy them. Oh, really? Yes, it was. That was a mess. I said, "Listen, um, this is not about you. Exactly. This is about me living my truth, speaking my truth, and sharing my truth with other people to help enlighten them. I'm not trying to do what you do. I don't even know what you do. So, this is me over here. Isn't that something? Because really, the world is. We have millions, but well, billions of people." And one person is not just going to be the only one that do that. Exactly. There are going to be many a people exactly. who do some of the same thing, doing it differently, but doing the same thing. And you are different people. Yes. You're giving your truth. Yes, and that's, you know, that, that's probably the first time in a long time I got angry. I'm like, why is it when I'm doing something, Lord, it's a problem and it's something different. And I found out later why he felt I didn't need to do that because he was trying to be an opportunist oh okay with me because I, I shared some of my work with him and i guess he saw dollar signs <laughs> isn't and, that something and i really wasn't looking at it mm -hmm. from that perspective but it was revealed later on and i just told him i said i can't i just can't deal with you anymore you know i wish you all the best but you're kind of interfering with what god is trying to get mm -hmm. me to do and that's commit to self and share my story, share my truth with people who are ready, ready to listen. So if someone is interested in go, hearing you on your video blog, look, is it Facebook? Um, yes, my Facebook personal fi um, profile is Jazz, J-A-S-Z, legal, <laughs> legal of my own, that's one word, McGee, M-C-G-H-E-E, -E. and I also have a blog, which is also titled Little Girl Blues is This Is Of An Image, the blog on abstractpoet87.wordpress.com. All right, Jazz, it, had, it has been a plum pleasing pleasure to sit here and sup a little tea to get to know who you are and what you are doing. Yes. Yes, and whenever you feel the need to come back, please feel Larry free. Walker Show. Thank you, Miss Walker. Oh, you much obliged. In the meantime, my beloved peeps, you know the saying, I am going to plant you now. Oh, yes, I am. And dig you later. See you next time. Ta-ta.